Hello there. Hi, I'm Sam, uh, and I'd like to uh, talk to you for a little bit, for the whatever minutes I've got left, to try and ask you some questions, to try and get you to think about things in perhaps a different way. Because, I mean, how many of you are com commercial, work in a commercial sector here, like build things for businesses, right? Okay, so I really would like to see in the future a place like this where not all of you are going to put your hands up, right? Because to think about it, when we write programs, when we write software, Right, where are the potential domains? Where could it be useful? Is it only the case that software is useful for business? Right, clearly not. Right? So, and the problem is that, that, that all the money's in business, so that's why we've got a lot of professional developers working for businesses, writing software for businesses. But could we imagine software being used elsewhere? And how do we get the rest of the world to understand the amazing, powerful potential of code? So, Another way to think about this is I used to go to parties before I had kids. Did, it, did you still go to parties? Anyone there go to parties? And, I, and the thing is, like, you talk to people and they'd say to you what they were doing and you'd have a lot of interesting conversation. And they'd say to you, so what do you do? And you'd say, well, I'm a programmer. And then that would kill the conversation, right? So <laughs> you think, well, how, how do you deal with that, right? Because I certainly, and maybe many of you, are really deeply excited about programming. They, they can do so many wonderful things. And to imagine where we can take code, where we can take programs, is just a fundamentally fantastic thing. The problem is, when you can't share that joy with others, it's really deeply frustrating. It's like going and saying, I've written or read a beautiful poem, or I've seen a beautiful painting, but people are saying, well, I'm not going to open my eyes. Sorry. I can't, I, I, I'm not even going to spend the time to try and understand this. When I talk to people in society, this is the problem I find. And so, one of the goals I've tried to do is to figure out, how do I have this conversation? How do we teach? How do we engage? How do we excite people who aren't yourselves, but everybody else, about the things that you're excited about today? And so I think that I started this journey by trying to figure out ways to wrap programming in a way that was interesting. And for me, that was making music out of code. How could I turn a programming language into a musical instrument? Right? And then, could I perform on stage with this instrument in a way that people could recognize it in the same way they recognize a guitar? Because then suddenly I've got a way to actually have a conversation. And this is what I did. I created something called Overtone with a friend called Jeff Rose. We built it. It was wicked. But uh, it, all it did is allowed us to create that intervention where we could get people excited to say, oh, I didn't realize code could do this. Right? But it didn't give me the opportunity to give them the experience, because that's really what it's all about. Unless we can give people an experience of code in the same way you guys and ladies have experiences when you program in your favorite environments with your favorite editors or your favorite languages, and you get this real buzz of the interaction, how do we give that kind of same feeling to others you know, so we can get them excited? And so this is where uh, it's all about lowering the barrier to entry. So at this point, I, I discovered these guys who made this little small computer called the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to hold one up, right? Has anyone here not heard of a Raspberry Pi? Fabulous, right, okay. So, I mean, just as for the people who at home are watching on the cameras, if you've never seen one, it's, it's a computer that's uh, only $30, $35 to buy. Uh, and it should be on the screen now, maybe, if we can switch to it. Is that going to work? Here we are, this is it now. Uh, so I've got no slides for everybody, no slides. I've just got a computer. Uh, and it's the terminal, right, so that's some ASCII art. And I'm going to open my uh, program, uh, Sonic Pi. You can normally open it by clicking on the little icon up here, like in the Start menu. It's actually installed by default. There it is. But I'm going to run the latest version, because that's always more fun in demos, to run the stuff that you were hacking on last night. Uh, uh, I'm, going to, I'm in the directory, right? so boot it up. And so the thing is, like, in a classroom, when you're trying to teach kids about programming, because it's also about trying to engage people, so not just about engaging adults, but engaging kids, have any of you been in a classroom recently? Right? I, it's amazing. I, I went in for the first time since I was back at school, only a couple of years ago, and the teacher, she was, it was amazing. Like, cause I, I work in a university context, and I speak at these kind of events, and look, look at all you guys. It's amazing. And ladies, you're all sitting down, being quite quiet. <laughs> right? That's amazing. Like, in schools, it's not like that. They're running around and jumping off the tables and spinning around on the chairs. And so the teacher's like, come on, children, I'm going to say something, I'm going to say something. Three, two, and then she's like, say, Johnny, stop on the chairs. And then eventually the kids will be quiet, and then the teacher can interject a few sentences. What are your few sentences to teach programming? What are your few sentences that get kids drooling to code? Right? Is it open up Eclipse? <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it fire up a terminal, get Emacs or Vim started? 
Well, for me it is, right? But, but, but not for these kids, no. So, and it's, is it? And this is the other thing. Like, there's a, in the UK, we have a new curriculum for computing. It's fabulous. And uh, one of the examiner boards, they created some uh, exciting materials to get kids going with code. And the first one was entitled, Give Binary a Try. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's waiting for you to try. And the other one was, have fun, which is already a good start, have fun with sorting. <laughs> How many of you have had fun sorting anything in your lives, right? Well, okay, we're weirdos who like to program, right? So sorting is obviously quite an exciting thing for us, but it's not the exciting for everybody else. So how do you get started? So for me, the starting point was, can I make uh, some music? And also, can I make sure that the teacher, this is, this is complicated stuff I was demonstrating earlier, can I make sure the teacher is able to, uh, to get started as well? So the thing Sonic Pi, you write the word play, and you write a number, like 80, you press the run button, and you hear a bing, right? That's your first program, right? It's imperative code, great. This is Ruby, this language. But we don't need to know about that. Uh, and this is a great way to get started. So, and I've seen, oh, yeah, and then you want to be able to make a melody, right? So I made a beep. So if I play AT and then, oh, yeah, and here you can talk about abstractions. So numbers are great, because what do numbers do? Nobody knows. The numbers go up and they go down, right? That's what they do. Well, now you know, right? This is useful, useful as a programmer to know these things. Um, <laughs> And so I can make the number go up, and I can make the number go down, right? So I already can play every note you can possibly imagine, right? You might say, what, what about note 70 points? That. Well, I can play that as well, right? So I can play in between notes. And so I can play notes, but I also want to be able to make a melody. So let's play 70, and then let's play eight, 75, say. Oh, it's actually the same time. So that might have surprised you. So this system is uh, uh, built, although it looks very simple, there's quite a lot of complicated stuff under the hood in terms of timing, right? Because this is a, this is a strongly timed language. Um, and so I don't really have types, I have times. Um, no, it's, it's a serious thing, right? I've written academic papers, there's academic proofs about the timing system inside Sonic Pi. Um, but you can see on the right-hand side here, we actually, at the same time, time zero, play these two notes. So if I want to make a melody, I need one more thing. And that is the phrase sleep. So I'm going to sleep for one second. I now have a melody. That's it. Beautiful. Look at that. I, where's the round of applause for that? A, <laughs> come on, come on. No, but the thing is, right, this is like you've seen. So I, I, I got my own round of applause by asking for it. It's a ridiculous thing to do. But no, if you think about it, that this, have you seen, heard of Logo, like Seymour Papert's work? or you drive the turtle around the screen, right? And you've got a few commands. You've got pen down, pen up, move, rotate, and go forwards, right? This is, I've got two commands, and already I can do pretty much all of Western music. <laughs> Think about that for a moment. Any tune you can possibly imagine, I can write with these two commands. OK, it's going to sound pretty naff. It's a beep. But I can do all, all, all tunes with these two commands. Because what is it? It's like, in Western music, we care about how high the note is and when we play it. I've got those two things here. But I've got five minutes now to try and show you. Because the thing is that um, uh, there's lots of things I want to try and talk to you about. And so that's why I've got this piece of paper here, which I've got. At 11.50, you can see me talk for a longer period of time and, and with more demos. So if you're excited about this, if you can read that, um, I'm going to be there. So it's the Emerald Room at 11.50. Um, but uh, seriously, what I want to try and show you is that, that Sonic Pi is about many things. It's, I was earlier talking about trying to engage people. Here is like the lowest possible friction barrier to entry for a creative experience of code that I can imagine, right? Uh, and specifically with music. So this, for example, what are those barriers? Well, expensive software. Typically, music software is expensive. This is entirely free. It's entirely open source. Um, it runs on your Macs and your Windows computers. So if you already have a computer, use that. Right, just download it for free. Just Google Sonic Pi, and I'm sure you'll all be doing this tonight. Um, but if you don't have a computer, and not all people do, right, or access to one, or maybe there's one in the home, but you're not allowed to use it because the parents don't really know how it properly works, so they don't really want to let you do weird things because otherwise they, they, their emails stop working, then you can buy a Raspberry Pi for $35, right, or £30 pounds, or 30 something euros. Uh, and so now you've had access to, to all this stuff, right? So load barrier to entry in terms of free. Uh, or hardware, but also a lower barrier to entry in terms of how easy it is to get started. But this is not the most important thing. I think it's really important to be able to get people started so we can have this conversation, so we can start to talk to other people other than ourselves about why programming is amazingly powerful and creative. 
But it's also important to be able to, to do interesting things with it, right? So I've made some beeps. I've got 3 minutes 56 seconds, so I try and somehow convince you that it's more interesting. But I will make a statement now that I use this system in nightclubs, right? I actually perform live in nightclubs with this system. I do more than the beeps, must make it clear. It's not just like beep, beep, beep. I, I can do a bit more than that. But so the goal is to try and make it clear that we can do more. So what can we do that's more? Well, let's, uh, let's throw, on the, we've got a full help system with a tutorial here. Um, let's make this a bit bigger. Uh, and yeah, we've got the introduction, all this, uh, how to do all these things. Great. Uh, where's the bottom page? There we are. And then we have some examples here, so we can cut and paste these examples in. Um, and I'm going to run this bit of extra code here just for fun. And I'm going to create a sample. I can play samples. So I can say sample. Uh, this is a sample set I've downloaded, which I'm calling MX. And I can play the first sample in that one, the second one. Right, I can start making some sounds. Let me turn it up a little bit. And so I can play the two of these at the same time. And I can change the pitch. Right, right, ready with two lines of code, I'm getting some interesting results, right? Maybe I want to add some effects, some slicing effects. Let's add it around this line. Yeah, maybe I want to change the rate of the slices, so the phase duration to be an eighth of a beat. Right, maybe I want to add some bit crusher to this. Maybe that's a bit too crunchy, so change the cutoff value to be 100. But as you can see, I'm just modifying it. And here, I'm, all I'm doing is pressing run, and I'm creating a new thread, which is executing the same time as the other thread. So this is a, a very strongly threaded system. But I can also, I've got this really cool thing called the live loop. Uh, you might have, have you ever used a loop in your programming environments? They're, they're pretty rubbish, aren't they, right? Because once you've created a loop, you can't ever get out of it. And it's this common pattern, right, to create a loop that's like reading off a socket or something, right? But then once you create that thread, you, you, you're screwed. You've got you to kill it at the end. Live loops are pretty cool, right? You've got to give them a name, like foo, and then you can do something in here. So let's play, to, uh, play note E3 and sleep for one beat. Right, and so I've got this thing going looping around, beep, 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 right? But one thing you probably didn't realize about loops is, well, this, the live loop, is I can change it on the fly, right? So maybe I don't like E3, maybe I like E2. So I change it, and it just swaps it in place. It didn't stop the thread. The thread is still running. I've just modified its behavior in time. And so now I can think about, well, E1, E2 is OK. But what happens if I wanted to do something more interesting? So let's create some, a list of notes to be an immutable vector of a scale uh, of E3 minor, oh, can't type very well, minor pentatonic. And instead of doing that, I'm going to play notes.tick. Maybe we should stick for a short amount of time, change the release time of this. Right, um, maybe I don't want to tick through it, maybe I want to shuffle it. Or choose a note. It's really hard to look the other way whilst I'm typing. Num octaves, three, two. Right, and now we get making some music. Right, I'm running out of time now, but <laughs> so if you can turn the music down a second, I'm just, just spend that ten seconds just to say, like. This is the start. This is just the start of where you can go. And once you get started, I'm going to put this on and I'm going to walk off the stage and leave this running. Here's one of the examples which are built in. So you just couldn't paste this in. And this is text making music. This is open source music. So come to my thing, 1150, find out more, get involved. This is Sonic Pi. This is a tool you can play with today to excite yourselves and your friends. Thank you very much.